Hello, my fellow gnomes. Today I'm going to show you how to take advantage of the new Roblox Analytics Funnel in order to help you gain a better understanding of what's going on in your game. Now, analytics can be fun, but why would you want to do this? Well, I'm going to be setting up for my new Doors game, Gnome Hotel, that we launched last month. It's a fairly basic Doors copy, and really it was made as more of a tutorial demo rather than a full-on game. But I noticed I've been getting quite a lot of dislikes since I launched, and it's now sitting at only 65% approval rating. Now for my game Gnome Hotel, it's actually really simple because the entire game is linear, so we can take advantage of the onboarding funnel. This is kind of how it's going to work, so you say you have a player, and we'll draw a little box here, and this is when they join the game, okay? And then when they join, they're going to be in the lobby area. And I want to see if they get to the next point, which is getting in an elevator. And hopefully then they get teleported into the game. My handwriting is very shoddy, but you have to go with it. But obviously some people are going to go into the lobby and they're never going to teleport to the game. So maybe there's like a 90% of people actually get into an elevator. And then all of those people who get into an elevator, I want to see if they get successfully teleported into the game. And so again, there's going to be another drop off there. Maybe only 90% of those people actually successfully teleport. Possibly there's a bug or there's some network issues that prevent them from actually teleporting successfully. Hopefully this would be higher than 90. It's probably more likely to be 99. Uh, and then our game itself is really simple because we just have a series of rooms. We have door one, door two, door three, and so on, all the way up to, in my case, room 60. And I just want to measure how many people are getting through each door. And then I can see at the very end, what percentage of people, maybe it's 50%, are actually finishing the game. And then I can use that to adjust the difficulty accordingly. So the good thing is that Roblox are going to process all of this for us. We just need to tell it where the bits in our code that all of these things are occurring. When they go into the elevator, when they join, and they enter each room. So in my main lobby, in my server script, I'm just going to go to the very top and I'm going to access analytics service and then I can use analytics service inside of my player added event just to detect that a player has added the game and we're going to use the log method and you can see there's loads of different ones for different types but we're going to use log onboarding funnel step event which is perfect for a linear game like ours. So the first thing we need to provide is the player. We've already got that from the player added event. Uh, then we need the step this is happening. And so the first step, this is going to be one. And then we'll give a name for it. So this is just going to be joined game. So then for our second step, we'll go into our elevator script. And you can see here is where I teleport all the players. And just before I do the teleportation logic, I loop through every player and I log step number two in the funnel, and I assign the name Elevator Teleport. And then if we go into our main hotel game place, now this has a server script as well with a player added event, and I'm just going to connect to that, and that's step number three with the joined hotel event. And then inside my door script, when a player opens a door, well, I'm just going to log that again. So it's going to be the number plus three because I've already created those three initial steps and then the number of the door. So we should go right up to 63. And the name of it is just entered door and the number of that door. Now, once we've set all of this up, we're going to need to publish the changes. And then really, it's just a case of waiting. So if we go and check out our games analytics in the funnel section, well, we're not going to see any fancy charts just yet. It's been 24 hours for me, but still I haven't got anything. But if we go on to view events, we can see we already have some data coming through. So we can see here that player has entered door 27. So we can see that 
our events are coming through, but it's going to need to gather a bit more data in order so it can build out a nice little chart for us. And now it's been a couple of more days due to the magic of video editing, and you can see we have some fancy data to look at. So we've had 6,000 people play the game, and we've been able to see exactly what those players have been up to. So we can see that 25.82% of those 6,000 players have made it all the way through. So we scroll down to the very bottom, you can see that this uh, this little bar chart slowly gets smaller and smaller until we're left with 25.82% or 1,500 people of that initial 6,000 managed to actually escape the hotel. And it's really interesting because we can see where the biggest drop-offs are. There's a bit of a drop off between joining the lobby and actually getting into the elevator. So we can see that only 85% of people who join the lobby actually do anything, right? Maybe they're just talking to people or maybe they decide that they really hate the look of the lobby. Who knows? Maybe we could get that number up somehow. Um, but our biggest drop is actually entering door 22 which is during the bacon chase that happens on door 20. And we can see this is when we start to have a big drop off. It's fairly steady. Uh, and then the first one happens actually on entering door nine, which is when the shadow monster will spawn. So we can see there's a, a bit of a drop off there. And then the next one, and this is quite a big one, happens down here where the bacon chase starts. And we can see players are dropping off. But then after that point, it's fairly consistent. A few people get wiped out, I think, by another shadow monster. Uh, and then some people get killed and don't manage to make it to the end. Um, but overall, there's no huge drop-off that's worrying me. I don't think there's any major uh, bug or quit moment other than that bacon chase, which maybe we should see if we can make it a little bit smoother for the players, add in a little hint to show them what to do so they don't get instantly killed. But really, to be honest, I'm quite happy with this. We're all in the green for the step completion. If you have any big red bars, that's something you really need to take a look at. Um, but this is fairly positive, I would say. Hopefully this little video has inspired you to start extracting some data for your own game. Let me know how you get on down in the comments and I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.